Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 450, Birth Control, What Women Want. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. This month, in in April of this year, Scientific American came out with a series of articles in that edition, all focused on issues of birth control and fertility and women's health. And the articles were written by professional journalists who specialize in medical work uh, and and publish their articles in multiple magazine uh, formats. But our impression from reading these articles is that they were pretty informative, but also pretty opinionated. They seem to have done a survey of surveys. They were reporting <laughs> results from lots of different surveys, but from reading the article, we couldn't tell that they had actually talked to clinicians who practice in the field. But at the end of the article, and, and that was initially frustrating, but at the end of the article, we realized that they were saying the same thing that Dr. Moffin and her office says, which is that what women want in birth control, three primary focal points of what women want. Number one, they want birth control that's effective. Uh, there are methods out there that have more or less effectiveness and more needs to be done to make them more effective. Second, they want fewer side effects uh, or no side effects if that's possible to come up with. And third, they want an affordable cost. And so we thought we would spend some time today talking about Dr. Moffin's experience as a clinician with 30 years experience working with women around their birth control concerns and issues what works best in her experience or in the experience of the women that she treats, what potential side effects or risks there might be to to do what we try to always do, which is provide education for the consumer so that they can make better choices for themselves. But what is it you want to say? (laughs) So I've, I've done so many years of taking care of women and their birth control. That was the primary job of an OBGYN other than delivering babies. So on the GYN side, we would talk to women about birth control all the time. And the primary thing that women wanted was, I want to be able to be in control of it, which is like birth control pills. You can, you can in take control birth, of getting pregnant in control of their birth control. In other okay. words, I take the pill every day. I'm in control of taking the pill every day. Okay. Or uh, I know that when I come in, you're going to, some people can't take a pill every day. So they would get um, an IUD. So an IUD lasts five years. So they didn't. They wanted to have something they didn't have control over in terms of daily control, but they wanted control over not getting pregnant. Okay. But they also they, they rarely talk to me about side effects unless they had them. Birth control um, pills are the most common birth control, and they are the the easiest, most effective birth control that we have, and we use it more often than we use anything else. In fact, our protocol is first birth control pills, and then if there's a side effect, like people bleeding, spotting all the time during their month, instead of having a period, but just bleeding all the time, no one wants that. Or if they got nauseated, or if they gained weight, or if they got swollen, all of those things were things that people would complain about when they came back for a visit, and they'd say, I can't do this. So so the birth control, is manufactured by major pharmaceutical industry. Many major pharmaceuticals. And they have the same hormone components for every woman? Yes. Because if you take that pill yes. and it's mass produced, you get what everybody gets. Right, that's right. But and, there are choices women, for doctors right. that so, they didn't really you discuss. Have to go through. You, you have to try. If a woman is, is spotting or bleeding mm-hmm. and uncomfortable with the pill that she's on, there are other pills you could try right. her on. And, so you, and you know, like, if somebody comes in, they're nauseated and they're swollen, that's an estrogen side effect. So you want to lower the estrogen. And are there pills then that have less? There are pills that have less and have more progesterone. And then if somebody's bleeding all the time, they may need more estrogen. 
and if they ha so you'd go to a pill that has more estrogen so this is is a so medical it takes the expertise of the doctor right along with the contribution of the woman right saying this that's is. right they have to give us feedback yeah so it's not like you can go to the pharmacy and say oh i'm going to take that that pill yeah. Yeah. unless you've taken it before you don't have any idea whether that's the right pill for you and you have to have a prescription to get a yes, pill. yes you do and you have to go to the doctor what and be seen really poor women um, Medicaid pays for birth control, so the me Medicaid system in America yeah. pays for birth control. So okay. birth control pills are paid for at the Medicaid clinics or at the Medicaid doctors. They will be able to get them at the pharmacy for very little cost or no cost. Because one of the arguments that the, the authors of the articles in the Scientific American seem to be making is that there's more of a social agenda behind the way it currently operates then there is an interactive agenda between the doctor and the female who has the concern. True, true, but I mean, they're, they're looking at it like, maybe we should just go back to looking at our, our basal body temperatures and, and, have, and, and have abstinence half the month. That Use doesn't- the, the rhythm method? The rhythm method, that yeah. doesn't work unless you want a baby. Yeah. It usually works to make a baby, but it doesn't work to prevent a baby. It's yeah. a very poor, it's it, the first thing women want is effectiveness and that's not very effective unless okay. you and you have to micromanage your periods and and your and your cycle and they were promoting it in a way to do that that there are a lot of apps that are coming out now on smartphones right. and stuff where you can track your body temperature and but it's still predict your ov it's still ovulation like, oh well i i have um the next five days we can't have sex right i mean that doesn't work for young women I mean, in my experience, that doesn't work for young women. I don't know that it works for young men either. No, it doesn't work for young men, and that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, young women may be afraid enough to get pregnant that they won't have sex, but right. But then they get a lot of pressure, their partner, and their relationships get strained, and, and then they oops, yeah. and then they have right. a baby. So, yeah. so being natural, completely natural, isn't always the issue. Right. But uh, there's so those are on the two opposite ends. Of, of control of periods and no control their social agenda was you should be more natural and and I just don't think that that's practical they didn't really talk to practicing doctors they talked to research doctors well and some women who have the the opportunity in the station in life where they can really pay close attention to that and track it might be successful at it but yeah. women who are busy who are leading lives raising children and taking care of homes and working they don't necessarily have the luxury to focus they on have that, trouble so remembering the pill because the busier the person that, that they, was, i mean remembering the pill is 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 a big issue and if yeah. someone comes into me and says i just don't remember taking pills i don't take them yeah. and i i just don't remember it my life's crazy or i have add and i can't figure it out then i say we need to have a more certain birth control that is that is there all the time so so we're talking about birth control pills that have different levels of estrogen. Estrogen and progesterone. And progesterone in them. There are other things like the patch, uh, right. an estrogen there's patch. Right, there's a, it's a birth control patch. It has both estrogen and progesterone in it. Okay, and so you put that on for a, a week, a month? How, how does um, that work? No, they're, they're, a, uh, they're weekly. So every week you have to remember to change your patch. Right, but you have it on you so you can kind of see it. It's on your yeah. abdomen so you, you, you have a clue uh -huh. that it's there but the estrogen and progesterone don't work on women over 250 pounds that includes tall women who aren't obese just it doesn't it doesn't have enough it's medication. made it's made for the average size woman right of well, which all no woman the, all is actually of these, the average so, size so woman. my complaint with birth control in america is that everything's made so that it's one size fits all right and that's now, a complaint in the article and well. you have to depend on your doctor to actually understand how birth control pills work. When I was in, when I was in early practice, I had a young doctor, a guy that I tried to explain. This birth control pill is for this person. This is for this one, and this is why. And give him the physiology, and he'd stare at me. And the rest of his it, career, his knowledge was woman birth control pill. Yeah, here same birth control pill yeah. for every single woman. If yeah. they, I mean, and if they bled too too bad, if they you know, so that's the attitude. I think right. that they're that they're criticizing they've been, yeah the that they're criticizing. Yeah. It's your doctor's responsibility to actually be a doctor and understand physiology and what you need. And that's the key. The only kind of a personal medicine is through the doctor. So, so they talked about birth control pills, the birth control patch, 
the IUD and there are two kinds of IUDs. Right, and for a long time we just had one kind of IUD and it and they had some one of the many kinds back in the 70s caused problems by burrowing through the wall of the uterus. IUD is a little um, plastic. Now it's plastic. Um, it looks like one looks kind of like a ram's horn and one kind of looks like a seven and they they're slid into the uterus and what they do is one of them that has progesterone in it it actually feeds back to the ovary and decreases ovulation and it makes the uh, environment in the in the uterus a, a second line of defense where the egg if it does god forbid get get um, fertilized it comes down the tube and then can't implant so then the patient doesn't get pregnant so the iud has to be implanted by a medical professional the woman can't do it herself right and it can't be removed by the woman either okay so you have to go to so the doctor, doctor to get it and you have to go to the doctor to yeah. to get it removed you, yeah and but you don't have to think about anything and it doesn't have very i mean and no, less less than one percent failure right so in terms of pregnancy in terms of pregnancy and the only reason birth control pills have failure is sometimes antibiotics interfere with them they don't interfere with this and the other failure is that people aren't compliant they don't take it every day then they can get pregnant so uh, are there still two different kinds of IUDs there's still two there's two different kinds now that have been approved and one is the one I recommend it's a very soft plastic and it has a little um, package of progesterone in it and it slowly secretes this progesterone and it works right inside the uterus and they don't describe that but it works in the uterus itself not through your whole body and it doesn't have estrogen it just has it just has progesterone okay. so so for people who are uh, more likely to get blood clots because of estrogen their genetics make them at risk for blood clots they don't get that on on this but they could on the patch of the pill and that was one of your arguments is that there is a test that will identify those women, women but the government has basically said, and the, and the insurance industry basically said, it's too expensive to give this test to everyone. Right. And you so think that I, we should I think we should. I mean, if you're really worried about blood clots and birth control, then we, we have the means to find out if you're at risk for blood clots. I mean, anyone can get a blood clot under any circumstance, but if at your risk for blood clot because of your estrogen, that's in your birth control, then we should be testing everyone. It's a one-time test, it's genetics, they don't change. We should be testing everyone to see if they have that genetic problem with taking estrogen. And if they do, then they can't take postmenopausal estrogen. Right. They can't, you know, we, we can't give that to them unless we give it in a pellet like we do. So there's again, no blood clots with that. There's a larger concern of women's health than just pregnancy. It, right. It's a, it's a much, larger domain of concern mm -hmm. and so what we're trying to say is that there are a number of different ways to obtain birth control that works there are side effects that impact certain women and that you can't make a one-size-fits-all decision for medicine in America so women need to have exposure to their physician where they have an opportunity to talk to them about their own individual health individual side effects individual concerns mm -hmm. and have the physician guide them to the selection that's most appropriate for them to achieve their results as desired, which is control over pregnancy, fewer or, or minimum or no side effects, and affordable costs. That's what we're trying to do, and that's what we hope you will begin to do with your physician. Talk to them about your concerns. Just don't accept a one-size-fits-all solution to the problem. And the control you have is that if your physician doesn't talk to you about this or won't engage about it, you can go to another physician. We don't have to go to the one right. physician that's given to us. We can go someplace else. So that's your control over whether you get the right birth control or not. And as always, thank you for thank listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.